All right, what's up, everyone? This is Evan Carthy from EvanCarthy.com. Uh, it's been a while, and uh, on the post that goes along with this video, I'm going to, to explain what I've been up to the past about two months. So basically, what had happened was I had realized I needed to tra change my trading style from where I was, from what I was doing, because just the swings I had was was way too much. So to make a long story short, I've um, been doing a lot of meditation for it. So from it, discovered two new setups that are working uh, for me. And basically what this is going to be is just going over the different markets I'm trading for the futures and um, what I'm expecting for tomorrow, how I'm setting myself up, and also any trades I took um, t today, whether they're wins or losses, and just to what look forward for in the future. So uh, the first one, the first futures thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at the uh, S&P 500. These are the E-mini futures. We also have the uh, mini Dow Jones, the Russell 2000s, the E NASDAQ, and uh, gold. So we'll start up. We may not get through all of them because um, today the big trades today were in the E-mini futures. And so I'll just go over what I was uh, looking for um, with it. So the charts I'm using to trade off is the five minutes. Sometimes I'll drill down closer and go into the one minute to um, get more precise entries in. So there were three trades I took today. All of them, fortunately, were winners. Yay. Uh, uh, these two yellow lines signify this is the 78.6 trade I'm looking for. And so there's two of them like that. So basically what it is is you take that pivot point down. Oh, let me go the other way for it. Take that to there, and see price came down and hit that. Um, well, excuse me, this is gonna be the first one right here. So price came down, hit that 78%, so that locks it in place first. So then price came up, didn't break this high right here. If it came up over here and broke that high, I'll put a circle there. If it came up, broke that high, it would be invalid. So it didn't break it. So then what I'm looking for is price to um, break out of this yellow line, but one more filter I use for it that needs to break out of is this shift pitchfork. So there's gonna be like going on, but it makes sense what I'm looking to do. And we can delete these yellow lines here, clean up here a little bit. So what I'm so what I was looking for right here is price to break up above the shift pitchfork once it closes above it. I'm looking at getting in a tick below the 0% Fibonacci retracement line. And then the exit is going to be up here at the 123.6 Fibonacci extension level. As you can see, price never came and hit that. So what I look for is the second entry is the 23.6 entry right there. So that's what happened. So my first entry was right in here at 33.76.25. Obviously didn't go up there and hit that. So when price came down and hit the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement level at 33.75.50, got in there and then had my exit just one tick below there at uh, 33.76 so got in there for that win uh, the stop loss would be just under this this um, swing low right there I mean there, there is a chance it could come back up there and take it out but I'll just go ahead and get out and take the loss if it does come down to that so as you can see after that got hit it did come down but fortunately I was able to get out of there and uh, with the win so then the second trade was off this same move here again and you can see yellow the blue arrows where I got in the red arrows where I got out uh, second one is going to be using this same pivot again because after price came up hit that trade it still never broke this high over here that I'll put right there it still never broke that high so uh, let me do the fibs the opposite way again still never came up still never came broke that high so still valid trade came down hit 78.6 again so if it comes back up and breaks the high next time, then we are good to go using that that right there. So once price broke the shift pitchfork line right there, I can see it closed right there, got in a tick lower right there. First exits up here at the 23.6% level. Obviously price never hit that. So second entry is down here at the 23.6, got in right there. Exit would have been way down here, uh, or the, excuse me, the stop loss would have been way down here, down down this low, uh, this swing low. Fortunately, that didn't get hit, so got field right there. Had the tick, just one, was at 37, yes, yeah, so at 33.76.25, about there, uh, and went up and got filled there. So, two trades uh, worked out my favor for that setup right there, and I just like putting the yellow line on there to keep track of the trades. So both those are good. So then the third trade, uh, it was real late in the day over here. It was going back and forth between this and the um, NASDAQ market right here. 
So what we're looking at is these green lines you can see right here are, this is the uh, broadening or expanding triangle pattern. This is the other pattern that, I, that I'm looking forward to trade. So whether or not it's, it's probably not the same way that LA Waves does it. It doesn't matter, I don't care. Uh, it works for me for what I'm looking to do for it. So what I look for, you have this move right here, lower low, higher high, lower low. And then we're looking for is when price breaks this number three right here, we're looking, that's gonna be the fifth move. And this is what we're gonna look for for the um, higher high. And we're looking to go short right here. So one of the filters I use is I, draw the Fibonacci level. First entry is going to be the uh, 23.6 level and second entry is going to be the 1.618 level. Now what these pink line represents and that black line represents plus uh, I'll take the shift pitchfork. I'll tell you what let me come back to those lines. I'll talk about the shift pitchfork real quick. So the shift pitchfork is another filter I use for this trade as well. Sometimes in the expanding or the broadening triangle trade price will come up through the pitch through the shift shift line sometimes it doesn't and use it use it as resistance so that's what it's doing this time is using it as resistance plus combine the fact that you had the 23 points you had the uh 1.236 percent uh Fibonacci extension level plus the pink line talk about here in just a second I went ahead and got short there, it gave me a lot more confidence in it. And then literally by the time I get in about uh, 20 minutes later, uh, that's when the news came out regarding the coronavirus and how almost 15,000 new cases were found in one of the provinces of China that were previously not reported. And you see the market just um, plunged out right there. Now, normally the way I have it, I have my exit down here at the 78.6 level, but to be honest, I whisked out, uh, got out around here. Once it, once it came down and um, hit the uh, 50 back area from the previous days uh, high and low and then it starts showing support I just went ahead and got out but as you can see price has been trailing down since but normally my exit is normally anywhere between the 50 percent which is that top green line and the 78.6 level right there so how I get that is then I just draw it up to the high up there and as you can see price came down to that 50 to 76 percent between those two green lines right there I'll go ahead and delete these green lines. All these are a, are a trend channel line that I used to draw for it right there. And as you see, price broke out and used it as uh, resistance for it as well. It is another filter that I'm sometimes looking for um, to get in for the expanding triangle pattern right there. So let's clean this up a little bit more because don't need that anymore. So uh, what these lines represent right here, the pink line and the black line, let me show you the previous day high low put that on here so basically what it represents is is going to be the extension levels of the previous day's high low so i haven't done it for uh today this is going to be from yesterday so as you can see right here that's the previous high previous low and that would have been for this day over here um there's the 50 back the 50 percent to 61.8 percent there's 1.236 there's 1.618 now these don't hold 100 percent of the time every time of course not they don't do that but they do give me a good map to what to expect for the day and look for the support and resistance areas. So as you can see, let me go ahead and hide that again. As you can see, price come hit the, hit the 1.236% area and I was actually looking for that, waiting for that to hit to get in rather than even a little bit early. I, I was hoping it was, it did. And then um, soon after the coronavirus came out, plus from, and anyway, so it, it worked out well. So let me show you how I draw it for today. So all I do is take the Fibonacci trade some extension level. There it is. I go put this bad boy right there. So there's the 50 to 61.8. Then I just draw my lines over to highlight them right there. There's the 1.236, 1.618, and I do it for both sides of it as well. Now these aren't, like I said, these aren't trades I take off of this, but it does give me a good kind of roadmap of where to look for support and resistance for the level. So there you go. So now I have it for today all set up right here. Uh, let me take that tune it off. And there you go. That's that. Another thing I'll, I'll do as well is look for support and resistance areas, the 50 back areas. So I'll just take this uh, swing low down here, this swing line, swing high right there to that high in a little bit more and then just draw the 50 back and also to the uh, 78.6 level so there's that one right there 
changes to signify that this is going to be a support area right there. So there's a 56.8, and I leave that shaded kind of like in that orange tint because that that for me it signifies the hourly. There's the 50 to 61.8, and there's a 61.8 to the 78.6. So that is. What that means right there, if it comes up and makes another high, then I won't worry about that at all. But as you can tell, there's definitely some support levels if the market keeps on um, dropping lower. There's really no more um, uh, resistant levels up ahead as price keeps making these highs. You can see how I'm just, this is using the hourly. You can see how I've done and marked up all these um, trades. I mean, I've taken all these trades, but I've gone and marked them all up, uh, going back quite a bit for all these different charts just to. Um, etch these into my mind, these trade setups. So that one, that's that right there. That was a, those are the two trades I'm taking right now. Let's see if there's any more we could be looking at taking right here. That was 78, nope, nothing right now, no big deal. Um, so we'll go to the Dow here real quick. Uh, wasn't a whole lot going in here today. Missed that trade this morning. Let's kick myself for that. Um, I'll go back in and adjust these. Uh, later to it, but yeah, that's basically the only thing I saw right there today for the Dow. Russell 2000 here, let me zoom out here a little bit because as you can see right here, we are in a, uh, right now we're in an hourly uh, short short box right there. There's the 50 to 61.8, there's the 61.8 to the 78.6 right there, and you see price bounced off of it, used as resistance, came back down, and now we're back in it um, here again. And then in this um, support area, 56.8, and if I go and draw the um, support levels, I'm not sure which one I drew it off of down here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure which one I drew it off of, but <laughs> it'd be off of one of these over here. Um, it would have bounced off of the uh, 78.6. Let's see, yeah, 78.6 right there and actually what I was using for this rather than hourly I was using the daily chart that signifies that kind of purple background right there for me so that means the daily chart right there so see it bounced off the 78.6 and use that as support uh, for it so that is that let's see if there's anything going on and then we're also to look for oh okay so yeah so one thing we had over here I'm gonna take this off right here make it a little cleaner so one thing we had, we have an expanding triangle right here, or a broadening triangle. There's, zoom in a little bit more. Here's the one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one. But the thing about the fifth one is it just keeps going up. It hasn't come back yet, um, not even to the 50% retracement to consider that a finishing one. So that is why, say for instance, I was in this trade, this just would have been, um, chalked up to this first entry as a loss for it. Let me show you here real quick. That and that. So first entry would have been right about here. Second entry would have been here. Exit would have been somewhere between the 0.618 and the 200 right there. So that just would have been lost. Would have taken it right there. No big deal. It happens. But then what I'm looking for with this trade, and I will be looking for this, uh, let's see where we're at. Yeah, maybe tomorrow, depending on what the market is going to do, especially it's still in this uh, resistance resistance zone over here. It's expected to come back down. When price comes down here and hits the midline of this shift line, shift pitchfork right here, uh, I'm just gonna be right there, right there, wherever. Um, I'll be looking to get in right there with the stop loss below the shift pitch line a little bit over there. And then the exit I will have will be slightly larger, probably about right up here or so, just a little bit over one to one, because then all I have to do is get about 50% right for this time, and I'll make a little, little money off of it. And then also I have a second entry down here, down on the screen line right here, and uh, with the same kind of exit level as the first one. And so if it does go down there, hit that as well, gets up and hit it, you know, if you're riding this 50% uh, of the time to make some um, good money off of that one. Then it's not over yet because then once it finally closes below this shift pitch line, once it closes below there, uh, what's this thing over here? That's annoying. Okay, let's move you over here. Then once it closes below the shift pitch line, what shift pitch fork, excuse me, what I'm looking for is, at minimum, the 50% line right here, if this remains a high at 1672.6, uh, the 50% line for that line to come and hit, but also looking for the 78.6 line. If 
at the 50% for sure, but depending on what it's doing, I'll be looking for the 78.6 line, but the 50% line does signify that this broadening or expanding move will be over. So if price keeps waffling along, comes out over here, eventually breaks down, then the exit will also be around um, the 50% level. It, it just depends, a couple of moving pieces, and as I do more videos, it'll make more sense as I um, go along through that. There's a couple of different steps for that one. Uh, NASDAQ, uh, this is one. Um, Oh, you know what? Oh, I'm getting ready to short this. Okay, perfect. I'll go over that here in just a second. Um, so this right here, I'm going to delete that. That's just a trend line right there for a channel. So this is another broadening or expanding triangle right here. One, two, three, four. There's the fifth one up here. Uh, so here, let me delete that so it'll make more sense. So you got one, two, three, four, five right up here. So let's do that and do that. That would have been the first entry and then the second entry never gets hit. But then let's go show where the exits would have been from up here. So the easy exit, the safe exit, the 50%, as you can see, it came down, hit that one in that big move when the coronavirus uh, news broke to hit that and then push it down even lower and hit the 78.6 level of there. So from this move right here is uh, complete. So we can take that off right there. Another safe entry, if you're looking to get in, is just wait for that shift pitchfork to get broken. Take that, um, take that exit or take that entry right there once it closes below it and then at least take it down either to the 50 or the 78.6, but that one is done, so we can take that off there. Then uh, last, I think Friday when I took this trade, this was a loser. Uh, you can see right here, there's a red arrow where I got in, there's a blue arrow where I got stopped out right there, no big deal, right? Because this is another expanding um, expanding triangle, a broadening triangle, however you want to say it. One, two, three, four, still waiting to the fifth one to come back. So price went up, hit the 123, hit the 61.8, and then I eventually got out somewhere like right over here, probably too, too late of an entry, but hey, it is what it is. And so that was that. So, but what we are looking at is now that price is coming back. We are, or I am looking for, excuse me, because, okay, here's that trade I mentioned here a little bit ago. Um, that broadening triangle when price just takes away for it. Look, it came down and hit the shift pitchfork line right there. So if you have that, there's your kind of exit level right there. Just move that up, maybe extend it up a little bit to get a little, a little over 1.1. So you get in at the, at the shift line right there, the red line. Then the green line right there, you get in, you'd get in, and it came up and um, give you give you a nice win right there. Um, so I've just noticed that as a good support level for it. But what the next trade I'm looking for is for this bottom shift pitchfork line, the blue line right there to get broken. Let me make sure I have the correct high on over here yep there we go and these lines extending right here are just kind of sw swing point uh, lines that make it easy to draw the uh, Fibonacci retracement and extensions off of that's the one we just went over uh, also let me switch to 15 minute chart be a little bit easier to see so uh, there's the bottom of it there's the top so when price breaks this um, this uh, uh, shift pitch forward. I'll take a look back five minutes. It's gonna look different for that one. Yeah. So, oh, it's getting ready to break it. So even uh, how long has this video been? I don't even know. I'm rambling over here. But anyways, when price breaks this shift pitch fork, I'm getting it in on it. My exit is gonna be just north of uh, of wherever I got in on the shift pitch fork. So probably about right there. That's gonna that's gonna be the um, exit, and then the or excuse me, stop loss. But then my exit level at minimum is going to be just is probably going to be just north of the 50 percent if i want to go haywire with it then i would take it down to the 78.6 but i'm just not sure what i want to do right now if i'm trading two lots that's what i'm going to do but probably for this trade i'm just going to do one for right now um, and take it just north of the 50 because as you can see right here there's one and there it's, it's over two it's over two to one um, risk to reward ratio right there for it which is um, definitely what I'm looking for anything over one to one is a good trade I'm willing to take because like I said I figured if I had to get over um, 50 only have to be right a little bit uh, about 50 percent of time if it's just you know say it's a 1.2 to 1 ratio that would cover the cost for um, uh, commissions and all that so uh, 
so yeah but uh my look at my winning percentage it's, it's been um greater than that now so anyways rambling sorry about that but yeah this so this is gonna be a trade i'm looking for here probably gonna take a shower hand a little bit and then before i go to sleep and then what time is it yeah it's 11 30 over here and then look try to get in right here um so then lastly gold over here really didn't look too much in this today so i'm not sure if i missed anything but anyways that's that as the videos come out uh it'll be more sense for how i'm trading but um anyways uh take care and talk to you later bye